Oh, I'm positioned over the field. The tines where it needs to be for the row. I got a backup. We'll see how this goes. So before I go driving through the field that has manure and stuff already on it, I'm just going to do a little test here. Uh, see what I can get going. So I had, you can see the tine attached here. Alright, it does engage the ground. Now I'm going to rev up a little bit and try to stab it slightly. Or you know what, what if I just float the bucket? Oh geez, that stabbed pretty far. Not bad. It's about up to mid palm. That's probably deep enough. And if I actually stab it down, I could probably even get it deeper. I think this is going to work out just nicely. Might take two passes or one if I can get it nice and done. Hello, Aria. How you doing, girl? Good morning. <laughs> All right, let's get this done. It's working. All right. I had to take another stab at it because of the weird angle. I couldn't just back in a straight line. This has got to be the most unconventional furrower ever. Might also be the cheapest. 70 bucks for one time.
let's go give it a little inspection here. Well, the first thing I can tell is I don't know how to do a straight line, but I mean, I knew that in the middle of it. The second thing I'm noticing is, man, did it do a nice job. I almost want to go back in one more time, but at the same time, don't. I think I'm going to give it one more time, try to deepen the trench, because I am getting potatoes and onion sets in here, and they are root veggies, so they need to go, you know, below the top surface. Even though I am doing straw, I just want to give it another go. All right, it's working great. Excited about that. So I'm going to get back in the tractor, give this another go. And then next step. All right, man, this is rough going. That's about as good as I'm gonna get. It's a lot more difficult to not fall when there's hay everywhere. But that's about as good as I can get it right now, honestly. Probably gonna have to come back with a hand hoe and do it, but whatever. <laughs> you can't get everything done immediately with a tractor. Time to look for a plow in the future anyways this area is so small that although it will suck doing it with a plow it's not even a big deal it's not like i have acres and acres and acres of planting to do it's just a couple 50 foot rows and i've already got a really nice start outlining it so now to go grab the hoe make these a little deeper get the crops in the ground get the mulch on top and get the drip line hooked up that seems like a good project for today the next part is going to be taking care of all these things so that can actually produce some crops some yield right I wish I could say that my forklift tying idea made these perfect troughs but what it did do is just basically loosen up all the soil and kind of mix it and then i came back with my trusty landscape rake which is three feet and then basically trued it up now i'm going to plant these and see how many i can get in the ground per row i have a feeling i'm going to need that third row in pretty quickly here so i have the furrows created in the field there now what i'm doing is cracking garlic to get ready to go in the ground. We have here Romanian Red. We ordered this from Peaceful Valley Farms. It's certified organic. We're trying to be an organic farm here, so we need to make sure our seed is at least GMO free. In this case, it's already organic, so it makes it nice and easy. This right here is the garlic bulb, or the head that we start with. And then we broke it here into only four cloves. So now these are going to go right into the ground. So we're going to continue doing that with the rest of the garlic that's in this bag. And then we get to go out in the field and get them planted. So I took the outer skin off of this. And uh, this is what a hard net garlic looks like before it gets planted. So, or torn apart to get planted. It looks like it has one, two, three, four, five cloves on this one. That is exciting to me because I hate the garlics that have like 50 cloves in them. So now I'm gonna take this stem out and take this last layer of paper off and then just crack off the individual cloves exactly like Bianca is doing and putting... <laughs> now that's a garlic. And no this is not elephant garlic. Romanian red. <laughs> Man, I love the size of these. So if we wanted to guarantee giant stock, we would only plant the massive ones like this. And the ones like this that came off of the same plant, right here and right here. Look at the difference in size. We would plant this one and use this one in our food. 
and if you continue to plant the large cloves, you are nearly guaranteed to have massive clove sizes like this on the next garlic that you harvest. Alright, so this is how I crack garlic, is I take two cloves right here and put my thumbs right by the intersection. Then with my fingers back here, I kind of press up and towards me as my thumbs push out like this. You can kind of feel it start to give. There we go. And then it just pops them right off like that. This is where the roots come out. And we're trying to be careful not to completely destroy this upon removal. Then we can just separate these here. And that's what we want. Okay, what the size of that one? All right, that's it. Why are we here in our fire pit? Well, you can either cut the potatoes and let them harden over for a few days, which I forgot to do, or you can get some wood ash, which we have right there. Had to dig down about six inches, maybe even a foot, to get to the old wood ash after all these sandstorms. But this is what the potatoes look like after we've dipped them. So, now, we're just going through and going to get the rest cut and then in the ground. It's not taking too long, just a quick cut and then a quick dip. And that's it. We just have a few varieties here. Let's see here. The ones we just cut are red thumb fingerlings. We have Cherry Reds and Magic Mollies. The organic fingerlings are very small. These Cherry Reds are pretty large. Same with the Magic Molly potatoes. They're a lot bigger, so we're going to have to do a lot more cuts on these. But then we'll be done with our prep, and then these go into the ditch. All right, so we have our three varieties of potatoes here. We've cut all of them into seed size and covered them with wood ash. Now they get to go in the ground. All right. So now I've got this 100 foot tape measure and I'm basically just kind of walking forward getting more tape out Why? well I guess I can't find a 12 inch ruler or a yardstick to use with for a measurement and so I'm just gonna lay this out along the 50 feet and then I'll just eyeball the spacing from there Also tell me how long these actually are. I just saw 65 feet. That's good because I need a lot of potato room. Okay. There it is, 65 feet. <laughs> there we go, 65. 65 feet long row. Now I can plant the potatoes, all right. All right, so I'm here at the 32 foot mark. 32. And I'm thinking, I already have a ton of potatoes. <laughs> Basically 30 plants with one variety. Haven't even reached the end of the bag. I'm gonna switch varieties. Be great as if I recorded the variety I planted for the future so I will know. Magic Mollies went in first. 
this trench right here, 30 feet long of Magic Molly. Should be 30 plants. Now I'm gonna switch up to another potato. All right, the very end of the row from the 30 foot mark on are these red thumb fingerling potatoes. Now I'm gonna switch up varieties again. But before I do that, I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna pull the dirt over these potatoes. So what I do here, just to get the dirt out of the rows, and you know, I'm sure there's a thousand different ways to do this. I just take the landscape rake and I kind of pull it over them a little bit. And then I come to this side here, the other side of the trough, and I push it over. And that's that. And I'm going to continue down and collapse the trough on all of them. straw in one final step after I get all these planters in the ground because I still got to run the drip tape exactly where they are and get everything in the ground before I do the straw step just because it's going to be a hassle it's windy and I have a feeling if I do it in stages it'll all get blown away in stages so that'll be last it's going good though it's a lot of potatoes my goodness all right halfway down the road I totally found style way of doing this. I have this rake at an angle to the row and I'm just rolling through here like this just going forward. And it's just getting it all in there without problem. I'm already losing track of where the potatoes went so before I forget I'm dropping this uh, splitter for the irrigation down in the ground exactly where the potatoes are so I won't have to guess later when I come back to do the mulch. In the second row here I got these uh, cherry, organic cherry reds and they're gonna be the second row very beginning by the fence here and I'm gonna do most likely about 20 feet or so. I have a lot of potatoes and I still have tons and tons of onions to plant. So I think I'm going to call it on potatoes at about 80 feet of potatoes. That's a 20 foot mark on the second row here. And now we're going to get our garlic in the ground. It's nice that garlic can be planted a lot closer together than the potato plants. So I should be able to get all the garlic in the rest of this row. All right, so we are at the 40 foot marker here on the second row. So we've been able to get just 20 feet of garlic has been planted because it's so close together. So now I'm gonna switch over to the onions. All right, well, here at the 65 foot line, the end of the row here, because of how close we're able to get onions together, we're able to plant a lot lot more of them look at that so even though it's 20 feet we've probably been able to get through about half of it more than half of it so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the dirt over these run the drip lines for these two move the straw out of the way and then get another one cut right here and then I'm gonna plant the rest of the onions the rest of the potatoes in the test bed here which is no manure just sand and I'm gonna top dress it with a product called kick from a local place here see how it does ah oh, man it's looking good oh I got the world's straightest row in now I'm gonna go back and plant the potatoes and the onions pull the dirt back over it get the water line lined up pull the drip tape and pull the straw over whoo this is a good workout for sure it's coming along great though all right, so we're at the 54 foot line here. So almost another 10 feet of onions. Now I'm gonna switch over to potatoes. All right, so I'm here at the 35 foot line, about halfway, and I've run out of potatoes and have all this left over. Maybe I'll figure out something to put here or maybe I'll shorten the drip tape to make my water go longer. That would probably make more sense for my situation. 
But as of right now, I have all the crops that I had ordered and prepped in the ground. Ah, it's a good feeling. Just need to pull the soil over this last row here and get the drip tape lined up. Almost finished. All right, almost final step, installing the drip irrigation. This is 5 8 inch diameter. This is the wall thickness. It's pretty sturdy, should last uh, three years. This is how much it emits. It has emitters built in. This is the spacing of the emitters. And this is how big the coil is, 500 feet. So now, to get this unrolled all the way down the field, Bianca, the beautiful wife, has decided to join me for this short task. Nope, nope I didn't drink my water. Almost there. There it is. All three lines. One, two, three. Bianca found some old seedling potatoes, so we're going to try to fill up the rest of that line on the third one and not waste it. So we can just run equal lines there. So in the future, when we plant something else, we won't have to like add another 20 feet or whatever. But yeah, here we go. It's awesome. Now on the third row, we have to go back and kind of lift the tape up and put on the correct area. But other than that, it's looking great. Now just to tie into the main line and then get the pump hooked up, the straw on top, and we're going to give this baby a test run. The last thing to get is some agricultural covering for deep frost. And we're going to put it in three rows and cover this area for the winter. Awesome. I love potatoes, onions, and garlic. Right, Bia? How, how about you? Me too. I don't think if we planted all this full of garlic, I don't think we would have enough for the year. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding.